guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Today I want to talk about the relaunch of Fashion Fair Cosmetics. Now I didn't know anything about this relaunch. I stumbled on it by accident. I was just happened to go through my emails one day and uh, of course, I have a lot of emails from Sephora, but I clicked on one and it was about a different sale. And I just decided to click on the black owned tab. And when I did that, I, I saw Fashion Fair. I'm like, Fashion Fair? I thought at first I thought I was seeing things. But baby, when I realized it was the real thing, I was so shocked. It took me back immediately to my childhood. Where, you know, if you, back in the 70s, 80s, wearing Fashion Fair was a rite of passage. Going to the mall, to the Fashion Fair counter, getting your makeup done by this nice, pretty lady behind the counter. You know, whether it was prom or picture day at school or some other special event. Getting your makeup done and starting to wear Fashion Fair was a big event. It was a luxury event. It was... The interest into womanhood because of your mothers, your grandmothers, your aunties, your big sisters, they all wore fashion fair. So I was really excited about it. When I saw this, I started putting everything into my, my cart. I had the primer, I had the uh, cream to powder foundation, the stick foundation, the loose and pressed powder, and several shades of the lipsticks. <laughs> but baby, my bank account said, no ma'am, we are not doing this. Take some of that stuff out. <laughs> so that's what I did. So I ended up getting just um, the cream to powder foundation, one of the lipsticks, and I wanted to get the powder, but the powders were all sold out uh, in the store that I was going to. So I did order online at Sephora, and I picked it up in my local store. But, I mean, I could have ordered the powder and had it delivered, but I just figured, you know, I'll try it out at a later date because I already have a ton of powers. But y'all, I'm just so excited this and I've watched a couple of videos and it seems like every black woman has a fashion fair story. And it's kind of fun to see some of the younger generation. They don't really remember it. Uh, they may or may not remember an auntie wearing it, but it's kind of new to them. So um, this is just a good time. So I'm going to go ahead and put my look together. We'll go through that and then we'll talk a little bit about the relaunch at the end of the video. All right, so before we get started, I just want to go over just some quick details about the two products that I have. So we're going to start with the cream to powder foundation. The packaging is very pretty. I like the white with the gold trim. It gives a luxury, minimalist vibe. Inside the compact is a mirror with more golden accents. When you flip the product up, you'll find an application or touch-up sponge in the bottom with a second magnifying close-up mirror There is also a ventilation area uh, under the sponge to protect the sponge from bacteria. There are a total of 14 shades with Afrocentric or cultural names to celebrate all hues of black women. Now, I was torn between the Fine Chestnut and Brown Sugar Babe. Uh, I chose Brown Sugar Babe based on the undertone. Fine Chestnut is a neutral undertone, while Brown Sugar Babe is a warm golden undertone. I prefer warm golden All right, so the Cream to Powder Foundation will give you medium coverage with a natural finish. And because my skin is maturing, I do look for foundations that have skincare ingredients. This foundation has turmeric and vitamin C in it to address hyperpigmentation and brighten your complexion. 
Now, according to Sephora, this foundation is for oily skin. It is cruelty free and vegan. So I guess that means it's not tested on animals. And it's also fragrance free, which is funny because Fashion Fair back in the day was known for its signature perfumey fragrance. Child, this is not your mother's fashion fairy. fashion fairy. All right, so the foundation sells for $37, which is a normal price range for a good foundation. And by good foundation, I mean that it's not drugstore or quote unquote affordable. I mean, it has a decent shade range with different undertones, but it's not high end or luxury with a super high price tag just for the name itself. This price price point is a good foundation price. All right, guys, so I have already prepped and primed my face. So I am using the Aveeno Max Glow Serum and Primer. Y'all, this is perfect for people. If you have dry skin, this will illuminate your skin. It's going to keep it moisturized and hydrated all day. Under your makeup, even if you don't wear makeup, this is really good to have. All right, so like I said, I have the Brown Sugar Babe foundation. This is what she looks like. There is some type of oily condensation on it. Um, not sure what that is, but it's what we're going to work with today. So I have my brush and I am going to just move it around in here and we're going to see. Oh, I can't even see it. Can you see it? So it is very creamy. And it is definitely melting into my skin. So just So I'm just kind of trying to do one side just to let you guys see. Okay, I'm looking in the mirror and I cannot tell. I look like I just put on maybe a tinted moisturizer. And I'm picking up a lot on this brush. Can you tell the difference? I cannot tell the difference. Y'all, I'm picking up a lot of product.
Okay, so here's the foundation. As you can see, it does. It is a good match. I love the warm tone. Uh, it is medium coverage. Uh, you know, I, you can see my raised moles, but and even some of the flat moles. But these are not. It's not covering them. But that's fine. I do have the dark circles under my eyes, and it did not cover that at all, which is fine. We'll fix that with the concealer. But y'all, I look like I have on, in the mirror, I look like I have on a tinted moisturizer. And it's very light. I don't feel the foundation on my face. I don't feel like I have anything on. So, we like that. So let's just move on to concealer. So because of the dark circles under my eyes, I'm going to be using my Lancome Tint Edol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. This is the color 495. It is the color of my complexion because I typically just wear this to color correct and I'm just gonna tap this with my hand so if you can see how that And see how that covers those dark circles. And then to highlight, I'm going to go ahead and use my Maybelline Age Rewind Eraser Concealer in the color Caramel. Okay, so for powder, like I said, I have so many powders, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and try my Laura Mercier um, to set. This is um,
So I'm going to go ahead and just set the, the rest of my face with my MAC. My MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. It is in the color Dark. Blush. I'm going to do a little bit of blush. We're going to use the MAC. Uh, I hope you can see it. I hope my lights are not too bright. But this is Max Brush in Bright Response. It's an orange, orangey brush, a blush. And I wanted to pick this one because I felt like since I'm going to be doing the Olay Orange Lipstick, maybe this would be a good compliment. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a good compliment, but we're going to try it out. Okay guys, I think I used the wrong brush for this, <laughs> but it's all right. Kind of playing that out. So I'm going to spray just a little bit of the Max Fix Plus just to go ahead and set everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do my eyes really quickly and then I'm going to come back and then we'll go ahead and get into the lipstick. Okay guys, so I'm back with my finished eye look which is... Very simple. I kept it very simple today because I wanted the foundation and the lipstick to shine. I just used some of my MAC Paint Pot in a color Contemplative State. Here it is right here. And then I um, used the bronzer and just kind of blended those two together and that is the eye look. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for the lips. So let's see. So here is the lipstick. I got the Olay Orange shade in the lipstick. It comes in this beautiful gold tube and retails for $26, which I think is kind of pricey compared to other brands that are out there. The lipsticks come in 14 shades with satin and shimmery finishes. The Olay Orange is a satin finish. The lipsticks are hydrating, cruelty-free, and vegan. And they have this cute little magnetic top. Top. So love that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and line my lips. So just to let you know before you all say anything, I don't have a, a lip liner. So I'm going to be taking my Juvia's Place bronzer, Bronzing Duo. And I'm going to be taking the darkest shade. Yeah, I saw somebody else do this and I thought it was a a good idea. Because I have the worst luck when it comes to lip liners, eyeliners and lip liners. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't have any liner on my bottom lash line. It's because I don't have a black eyeliner. I thought I bought one, but it turned out it was blue. It was dark blue. Mm-mm. And then every time I get a lip liner 
or try to buy a lip liner, it is always either if I find the right one, like I know everybody does cork from Mac, but they're always sold out. And if I find one in the drugstore, it's either the wrong color. I have one here from Sephora. It's too light. I, I don't like it. So I don't use it. So like I said, anytime I find a, the right lip liner, it's either too expensive or the wrong color. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go in with this. Let's say, oh, that is bright. I don't know why I'm so nervous about putting lipstick on on camera. Oh, I can't make it look pretty like all the other girls do. I don't know if you can see, but this matches the No Honey <laughs> in my shirt. I like it. Let's, all right, I'll put on some more. Mmm. Yeah, I am dropping stuff left and right. Okay, I like this. What do you guys think? That is really, really pretty. All right, so my final thoughts on this relaunch. First of all, I am loving this lipstick. Um, it's giving me... I don't know, like a tangerine red or something, but I love it. Um, it is a satin finish and it is very hydrating. But uh, overall, and I love the cream to powder foundation. Um, the only thing is it is a medium buildable coverage, which it definitely gave me a medium, medium, uh, almost like a light coverage but I still like it. It's very light. And I will say if you have dry skin, just make sure you prep your skin by moisturizing um, and using a, a hydrating primer just to balance out the dryness because this does dry down a lot. As far as the relaunch, I am excited about it. I'm happy about it. Uh, but I'm also a little bit disappointed because... Um, I didn't hear anything about it. N I didn't see anything on social media. I watch a lot of YouTube makeup reviews. I didn't hear anybody talking about it. I think there was a small write-up in Vogue magazine, but I don't have a subscription to Vogue. I don't purchase Vogue, so I didn't. I wouldn't see it in Vogue. So I'm just curious as to why this wasn't a bigger announcement. It could have been bigger uh, because a lot of black women have stories about fashion fair and about their first time about their introduction to the makeup brand and uh, it just could have been a thing and I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more hoopla also um, the packaging I appreciate the white packaging with the gold trim I love the gold um, the, the lipstick tube the golden tube I love that it does say luxury However, I wish they had brought back the pink packaging, the iconic pink packaging, because that color, back in the day, it just said fashion fair. It was a statement color. It said femininity. It said luxury. It said black beauty. And I would have liked to have seen them bring that color back with a modern twist. Um, also, I will say that, um, you know, I respect this brand and I'm going to always support them, you know, when I can. Um, just a little bit of history, fashion fair, you know, outside of the makeup, before the makeup, it was the fashion fair uh, fashion show. And that's where we met a lot of our black supermodels like Beverly Johnson, um, 
I want to say Iman, not sure about Cynthia Bailey, but a lot of black models came out of Fashion Fair. And that's why the makeup came along because they said that uh, according to the history that um, a lot of makeup brands, because they were traveling all over Europe as well as the U.S., but a lot of makeup brands did not have any uh, complexion products geared toward African American women. So the Johnsons decided to create their own formula and thus the birth of Fashion Fair Cosmetics. And we are so grateful to them for doing that. Um, I know times have changed and a, a lot of makeup brands are on the market now. But Fashion Fair to me is an OG as far as black women. I know if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, you have a Fashion Fair story. So, overall, again, I'm happy about the launch, but I'm just a little bit disappointed that it was not more of, um, of an event, <laughs> if you want to say that. But anyway, so this is my look. I'm, I'm loving the lipstick. I'm loving everything. I feel pretty good today. I'm off today, so I'm about to get in the streets and showcase this fashion fair. And uh, I'm also going to take some pictures, too. So, yeah. But yeah, guys, thank you for sitting with me and watching the video. Comment down below. Let me know, have you tried the Fashion Fair products yet? What do you think? What is your Fashion Fair story? And um, subscribe to the channel and come back and we'll do it all again. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.